Hi everyone, welcome to Get Your Play Online. My name is Caitlin and today we're going to be doing meditation and art. So before we get oh, hi everyone, um, my name is Caitlin and today we're going to be doing um, meditation and art. So before we get started, um, I'm going to ask you to find a comfortable spot in your house, um, preferably one that's comfortable but also quiet. Um, because for this activity, for the first part, um, you're going to need to do a little bit of concentrating. So while you do that, I'm going to get our music situated. And before I start our music, I just want to say that um, we're going to start with our meditation. And the reason I personally like to practice meditation is because um, it's a time to, you know, take a moment for yourself. Um, you might have had a busy day playing outside and with your friends or with your family, and it's just a nice moment to take for yourself and to relax and to appreciate everything that you have. So that's the reason I like to practice meditation. A lot of kids have told me. Um, that for them, they can concentrate better, um, they feel a lot more calm after a stressful day, so that's why they practice meditation. Okay, so I'm going to get our music going. And hopefully by now, you are in your comfortable spot. And I'm going to be reading the meditation, so I'm not actually going to be doing it with you. Um, that's just something to keep in mind. Okay. So take a few deep breaths. In and out. In and out. Now I want you to close your eyes. If it feels comfortable, to gently put your hands over your eyes, you are welcome to do that. Now breathe in and feel your body relax. Breathe out and feel your body relaxing more and more. Just for right now, there is nothing to do, nowhere to go. Imagine you are sitting in front of your anger dragon's cave. Inside your anger dragon is feeling angry. You can tell by all the smoke that is drifting out from the cave. Why is your anger dragging feeling angry? See if you can tell. Think about your anger dragon. Maybe there was something recently that you did not like and that you are feeling angry about. Know that you are always in charge of your anger dragon. If he starts to wake up or starts to blow smoke or starts to blow fire, you are in charge. Only you know how to calm him down. Today, it seems like he is feeling angry right now. Maybe some smoke drifts out from the cave, or maybe you see some flames sometimes bursting out from inside the cave. Now begin to think about a situation or something that has happened recently where you felt tense, angry, or even very angry.
Maybe it was a conversation. Maybe you were playing with someone and they took your toy. Maybe someone did something you did not like. As you think these thoughts, imagine that they draw your anger dragon out of the cave. Know you are always safe when you are with your dragon. You are always in charge. As he comes to the cave entrance, think more about the thing that you did not like. Think more about feeling angry. As you think about it more and more, know that you wake up your anger dragon and calls him out of the cave. Standing before you is your anger dragon. You can choose to make him bigger or smaller. You can allow him to really throw a fit or to calm down. Tell him that you are in charge of caring for him, that you are completely in charge. Tell him that you are here to help him feel better. Now, take a closer look at your anger dragon. Is it a he or a she or an it? He or she might be big, small, huge, or tiny. He might be staring about widely or simply sitting there, breathing steam. What does your anger dragon look like? Is he breathing fire? Is steam pouring out of his nose? Is he showing his anger or pouting? Now, as you're looking at your anger dragon, I want you to ask him what he needs. Listen carefully. Listen with all of your heart to his responses. Can you hear what it is that he needs? What is it? Maybe he needs a hug. Maybe he needs to know that you are okay. Maybe he needs to say something about the thing you did not like. Maybe he just needs to tell a story about what he doesn't like and to remember that he is in charge of himself. Listen to what it is that he needs. Okay, now you are going to feed your anger dragon what he needs. If he needs a hug, you feed him a hug. If he needs to be listened to, you give him listening. See what he needs. Imagine that you are holding all of the very things that he needs and you give them to him one by one go ahead and feed your dragon great what else does he need maybe he needs to hear that you love him maybe he needs to hear some good things about him maybe he needs an apology just listen to what would make your anger dragon feel better and keep feeding him until he feels better. Is he feeling better yet? If not, keep going. If he is, let's let him go back to sleep. Now, Knowing you can come back to this cave anytime you want to feed your anger dragon and to give him what he needs, say goodbye and allow your dragon to go back into the cave and sleep. Tell him you will be here to take care of him next time he wakes up or feels like breathing fire 
or is really upset. Next time you begin to feel your anger dragon waking up, come back here to listen to your dragon and feed him what he needs. You care for your dragon. You are in charge of taking care of him. Wonderful. Take a few deep breaths here. In and out. Two more times. In and out. Last time, in and out. Okay, now I'm gonna ask you to slowly open up your eyes. You might feel a little tired and groggy, but that's okay. That means that you were super relaxed and focused and you were picturing your dragon. So now I just want you to kind of shake it out. You can roll out your head. You can also shake out your wrists, your legs, whoever you want. Um, I'm just gonna pause our music now. Okay, so hopefully now you're feeling a little bit more relaxed and you still have that image of that dragon in your head. So together for our art, we're going to kind of create that dragon that, dragon that you might have been visioning um, when you were closing your eyes and imagining it. So for this activity, what you're going to need is either a toilet paper roll or a um, paper towel roll. So I'm actually going to be using a paper towel roll that I cut in half. So. I would recommend maybe using a toilet paper roll just because it's smaller, um, but totally up to you, whatever you have in your house. So that's what I have here. So the first step is we're going to either be painting our toilet paper roll or we're going to be using construction paper and wrapping it around with um, whatever your favorite color is or whatever you imagine your dragon to be. So in order to do this activity together, I went ahead and did the second step, which is actually to put your eyes and your nose on your dragon. And the reason I did this first is because I wanted to, you know, show you guys the final product um, of our creation. And I didn't want you to have to wait for um, my dragon's eyes and nose to dry. So for me, um, it's not going to really look like a dragon just yet because we're missing all of the other elements, but I put two eyes on the top and I used beads. And I personally recommend um, maybe using pom-poms over beads because beads are a lot more difficult to glue and I had to use hot glue. That's the reason why I did this beforehand and I wanted to make sure it dried. So I have two big beads beads that I used and then two small beads on the bottom which is um, going to be the nose of the dragon. So the big beads are the eyes and then what I did to make the eye which I'm missing a sticker on my eye right now which is okay is I took I have stickers and I put a small sticker this size on top of my eye to make it more, more look like an eye. So if you're using pom-poms at home, um, I would recommend using two big pom-poms, two small pom-poms, and then on your big pom-pom, you can either draw an eye and glue it onto your pom-pom or use a googly eye. So those are your options for your eyes. So now we're gonna start the activity together. So I'm gonna actually be using um, this one, but as I said before, you're gonna wanna paint first before putting on your eyes and your nose. Um, this way you guys didn't have to wait for my eyes to dry. So I personally think that when I think of my dragon, I think of the color green. So I'm going to be using green. And if you're painting, I recommend using acrylic paint. The construction paper works just as well. And now since I'm done explaining, I'm going to put our music back on so we can continue 
to relax together. Okay. And this way you can see my dragon. So the first step, as I said, is you're gonna paint or use construction paper. So I'm just getting my paint. And you're gonna wanna use, if you're painting, a thicker coat. And that's why acrylic is so great because um, it requires less paint since it's more opaque. So I'm trying to be a little bit careful where I glued down my beads because I don't want them to fall off. They're dry, but again, I don't want to be poking at them too much since I only did it not too long ago. And if you're painting, you're going to want to paint one side, let that dry, and then move on to the next. Or you can just go for it and paint the whole thing. Um, if you do that, that's I think it's okay if you use acrylic because it dries faster, but your, your hands just might get some paint on it, which I'm totally okay with. So that's why I'm just going to go for and do both sides. So that was my top side where the eyes were, and now I'm going to go and do the bottom. And let's get a little bit more paint. I actually really like this green because it matches my eyes very well. For me, the tricky part is just trying to paint around my eyes, but as I said, if you guys paint first, let it dry, and then do your eyes, you shouldn't have a problem. This is just to save us a little bit of time. And another thing is, I would recommend doing the eyes first, just because you might not want to get paint on your pom-poms or your beads, whatever you're using. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how my paint has come out. I'll show you guys. There's still a little, you can kind of see the brown spots through it. So if you want, you can go through and do another coat. Um, I'm just going to let this sit and dry, which shouldn't take too long. Um, since it's acrylic, as I mentioned, so I'm going to let this sit on the side. And then I'm going to move on to our next step. So, as I mentioned um, in our meditation, hopefully you were thinking about the dragon, you know, breathing and maybe smoke coming out of its mouth. So when I think of a dragon, I think of fire, smoke. So in order to represent those colors, I have red and yellow tissue paper and for this part you're going to want to cut your tissue paper 
Sorry, I'm just gonna unwrap my tissue paper here. You really don't need too much tissue paper for this activity. So I'm just taking one piece of yellow. So I want them to be relatively long, so just little tiny strips, and they can be all different sizes. I think the different sizes, and if it's a little bit messy, it adds dimension to it. So I'm just cutting in a straight line, well not necessarily straight, but just one after another. And then I'm going to cut these off. Down. Okay, so now I have um, this, and I'm just going to kind of rip it, peel one off of it. Okay, so now I have all these tiny yellow strands, and I might not use all of them, that's going to be kind of after I'll figure that out, but I think more the merrier. Alright, so now I'm going in with our red, and I'm going to do the same thing. Just cut little strips that can be different sizes. I personally like my strips to be on the narrower side. Before I just kind of rip, since they're all connected on, on the top here, I'm just going to rip them like this. So now they're all not connected anymore. So I'm going to put that on the side. And then let's check in on how our dragon is doing. See if he's pretty dry. Yeah, he looks pretty good. So... Now, this is the fun part, is you're going to want to place glue all on the inside of the nose in the circle. So here is his nose, so you're going to want to do it on the top part here, You don't, and maybe on the sides. You're not going to put any glue on the bottom here. So for that, um, to be a little bit more precise, if you have a paintbrush that you don't really care about, I would recommend that to glue. So I actually have like a big jug of glue. It's a little hard to open. I'm just gonna use my other glue then. A little tricky. Okay. So I'm gonna put glue right there. I'll show you guys. So I'm taking my paintbrush, getting my glue, and then gluing right in here on the top and on the side a little bit. And you might have to go back and put more glue in, that's totally okay, because it's going to dry clear and you're going to be covering it up anyway with the tissue paper that we just ripped off. And I think it would definitely look more like a dragon if you use googly eyes. But again, as I said, you could always make your own googly eyes, do a pom-pom, and cut out a piece of paper. I might cut out a piece of paper after just to make it look a little bit more realistic. Okay, so I put my glue in. And 
you can kind of see it there. Okay, so now I have red, my red and yellow tissue paper and I'm gonna place it inside. So it's kind of dangling out like that. And you're gonna wanna put a decent amount of the tissue paper inside. So you're not gonna want it all dangling out. Like you're not gonna wanna put it just hanging out like that. So you're gonna stick it in. And then I'm gonna kind of try and alternate between my red and yellow. You might just kind of want to play with it as you go along and remember so we're gonna want this to kind of look like fire so however you think fire is supposed to look it also doesn't have to be red and yellow just placing it in where I have the glue what I got so far I'm gonna put more um, on this side here because I put a little bit too much on one side just to balance it out I think I need a little bit more red Okay, so this is what our fire dragon looks like right now. I'm gonna let the, this dry for a little bit. Um, my paint is fully dry, but just where the glue is before I start messing with it, you know, and kind of trying to change it up a little bit. So I think I'm gonna add to my eyes, like I was saying. I'm gonna take a piece of paper. show you guys what I'm doing. My art space is a little bit messy now since I got some paint, some glue on it. So I'm just going to draw little eyes. I think those might be a little too big so you're going to want to measure your eyes. based on the size of your um, bead or the size of your cotton ball. And again, you might not need to do this step if, you're, if you have googly eyes at home. So I'm gonna take off that sticker that I had before. All right, so now I'm just cutting. These are what my eyes look like. So I have two big eyes that I think are gonna be too big. So I'm gonna probably go with these smaller ones and cut them out. And for this, I'm just using scrap paper. It actually has like writing on it. So you can really use whatever you have in your house. And I guess you could do the eyes as your second or your third step. You can choose to glue them after you paint or do construction paper. Okay, so now I have my tiny little eyes. You're probably not going to be able to see it in my fingers. I'm going to glue that onto these two big jewels. I'm going to use the same glue that I had before. And the thing about dragons is I think 
there's not one way that they're supposed to look like. I think we see them in the movies and we think that's what a dragon's supposed to be, look like. During your meditation, you could have been imagining really anything. So if you want to think about really what that dragon looks like. I need a little bit more blue. Let's see if I can glue this on. Okay. So this is my dragon. Try and show you guys the eyes a little bit closer. And now that this is mostly dry, you can blow into your dragon and the fire is gonna move. So I'll show you guys one more time. So it looks pretty cool. And during our meditation, I asked you to take a few deep breaths. And if you're unsure of like maybe, how do I take a deep breath? This is one great way to practice is you can just blow into here and go, and then practice inhaling and going and breathing out. And as we mentioned in our meditation, this is your anger dragon. So sometimes when you're angry and it's a little bit hard to calm down, you can come to your dragon and you can practice those deep breaths and that will remind you um, to kind of think about everything, um, put everything into perspective, you know, before we start yelling and screaming, um, we can take a moment for ourselves, take those few deep breaths um, and kind of rationalize our anger and think about why are we angry? What is bothering us? So deep breaths are a great way to relax. Even if maybe you're doing homework and you're super frustrated, you can blow into your dragon and um, take a few deep breaths. So this is my final product. Hopefully you guys can see the full thing. Um, you can always go back and do another coat um, and you can make it a little bit more darker, change the colors. Um, another option is to maybe add orange in here because I only have red and yellow, but I think red, yellow, and orange would make it even a little bit more fiery. So yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me on Get Your Play Online. I hope you enjoyed our art and meditation. If you choose to complete the craft or you did the meditation with me and you enjoyed it, um, feel free to comment below and let us know how your dragon turned out or whether or not you like the meditation. All right. Bye guys.